Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about a additional module you can add to your ESP32. It's a little electronics module and it's uh, based around the integrated circuit known as the DS1307. Now this module you can pick up for about a dollar. That's all, about a dollar. And what it is, is it's a real-time clock. What we mean by that is it can take a small CR2032 battery, those are the, the little uh, circular disk batteries, and uh, you plug in that battery, and then you tell this module the current date and time, and it will remember it, and we can then read it back from that module, and it will tell us what the current date and time is. So why would we need this in an ESP32? Well, typically we wouldn't. When an ESP32 starts up, it's got simple network time protocol built in, and it can go out to the internet and determine the current local time. Great, not a problem. But what if your ESP32 solution doesn't have access to the internet? What, for example, if it's merely ac ac acting as an access point? or it's uh, being a Wi-Fi uh, station to another access point which is never connected to the internet. Might not be able to retrieve real-time clock information. Uh, perhaps you're using your ESP32 in some kind of mode where you're not even using the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, for example, or you're just using Bluetooth and no Wi-Fi. There are a few reasons where you might, you might want to connect a real-time clock. But as I say, this device is a dollar and uh, gosh, you know, you, you can't get much cheaper than that. So assuming you do want to connect DS1307 to your ESP32, here we're going to talk about how to do it. So the module itself, under a dollar, really easy to connect. Now this is an I2C device, or I2C, so we uh, connect it to the clock and the data line of our ESP32. Uh, we connect it to our 5 volts and ground of the ESP32, and normally the, uh, the device, the DS1307, normally gets its power directly from the ESP32. However, the battery backup capability comes into play, when you switch off an ESP32, you literally power it down, not put it into suspend mode, not put it to sleep or deep sleep, but literally take the power away from it. That's where this device can continually remember the battery. Uh, I'm sorry, not the battery, the time. So the device shows up at address uh, hex 68 in the I2C address range, and the device has a number of registers on it. Now the first uh, seven are the ones we're interested in. If we read and write from these registers, we can set the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the day of the week, the date, the month, and the year. So we can set these values in our ESP32 application, and we can read them back again into our ESP32 application. So we could imagine an application where we set the time or when we are network connected, we figure out what the time is, and then afterwards the clock can be used to uh, determine the current time on subsequent ESP32 boots. Now you may be asking yourself, but doesn't the ESP32 have a real-time clock in it? Absolutely it does. You tell the ESP32 what time it is and it will remember it for as long as power is connected. If you take away the power from the ESP32, nothing happens in an ESP32 and the real-time clock is forgotten. There's no power to the ESP32, no battery backup, and it forgets it. So this is an interesting module which can be added as a peripheral. In addition to remembering the date and time, there's an extra 54 bytes of RAM that are available to our applications. Now that seems like a ridiculously small amount of RAM, but remember, because it's battery backed up, this is truly non-volatile RAM. Uh, with no flash, no other flash concept, we could read and write this RAM from within our ESP32 environment and be assured that it's going to be remembered. Don't see much of a use for that, but hey, this that's that's the story. Okay, so uh, a, a schematic for wiring this together couldn't be much simpler. You take your ESP32, you take uh, your clock line and your data line for I2C, you connect it to your DS1307 device, and you're done. Literally, that's all there is to it. 
So now let's talk about the software that we need to make this run. I've placed the uh, ds1307.c file up in our shared repository and we can go look through the code. At a high level there are two major functions, one to read the value and one to write the value. Uh, there's no great magic in this. Um, we basically say we're going to uh, write to the I to, to the device, set the register to be we're writing to address zero, switch ourselves into read mode and then read the next seven bytes of data and we've read our data. And for writing it's very much the same, say we're going to go into write mode, set our register address to be zero, write the next seven bytes of zero, uh, oh, zero. write the next seven bytes of data and then the uh, real-time clock remembers it. And that's it. So this is a little test program. Uh, when we run it, it initially goes out to SNTP, the network time protocol, determines the real world time through networking, and then writes that value into the DS1307. Then we go around a loop, we ask the ESP32 what time it is, and we ask the DS1307 what time it is, and these two should match up. So uh, let's go ahead and run that, uh, make, monitor, and let's see what we see. So the application starts up, it's connecting to SNTP, that takes a few seconds, and we see that there's the time from the ESP32, and the time as read back from the ticking DS1307 through I squared C. And as we see, they're in sync with each other. Now, if I was to power off my ESP32, bring it back up again and immediately ask it what time it is from the DS1307, the DS1307 would have been found to have been keeping perfect time. It would have been ticking correctly. However, if we asked the ESP32 what time it was on a fresh boot, it would say it's zero because uh, on a fresh boot it's not actually network connected and it sure hasn't figured out the time from this simple network transport protocol. So again, a, a bit of a, a bit of a hodgepodge of a demo this one. Really wanted to say that we have a sample application which is using the DS1307 logic. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's also a good example of uh, how to use uh, I2C APIs. Uh, if you really wanted to get interested, go pull, pull down the DS1307 data sheet and see if you can understand that data sheet. It's one of the less complex ones. Have a go at implementing it yourself and you'll find you'll probably end up with some code that looks very much like this. I hope you found something useful in this uh, tutorial and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks guys and bye bye.